I know there are some of you out there that are shouting, show us your floats. I'm Kristen, also known as Villain Vine, here on my YouTube channel where I chat about what I'm knitting on, what I'm sewing, what I'm making, or whatever other crafty hat rabbit hole I happen to be diving down this week. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about those things with me. And first, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone for all the warm, wonderful birthday wishes. It was an awesome day for sure, uh, given the circumstances. We couldn't really go anywhere or do anything, but uh, it was it was just a really nice day. I had Bella, I had lots of knitting, Dennis spoiled me rotten, and it was just, it was a really nice day. And your birthday wishes just made it that much better. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And yeah, I have, I have a really fun episode for you, I think. Uh, but first, just a couple of announcements before I get into it. Of course, we have our year-long make-along that is currently underway, and that is the History Mall, where we're all endeavoring to make something historically inspired. So whatever your craft is, be it knitting, sewing, weaving, embroidery, you're welcome to join, and the gist is to pick a time period that you're drawn to prior to the 1950s and make something inspired by it. And of course, there are two ways to join. The first is to hop on over to the Villainbine Ravelry group, where all you have to do to partake is to share your whips, your FOs, links to projects that are inspiring you, and just join the general chatter. And come March 1st, 2021, I will lock that thread and choose a random winner for a giveaway prize. I do have an update on the giveaway prizes, which I'll get to in a bit, but if Ravelry is not your jam and you don't have an account, uh, you can also participate by using the hashtag HistoryMAL on Instagram. So same rules apply, just share your makes and uh, come the deadline, I will choose two random winners to win giveaway prizes from both Ravelry and Instagram. And yes, finally, I have, I have an update on giveaway prizes. As you know, I occasionally like to sew project bags for my friends or for giveaway prizes. Sometimes I offer them in the shop. I thought it would be especially apropos to sew some project bags for the winners of this make along because you guys, you worked so hard. I mean, even if you're not participating in this make along, check out that hashtag or go on Ravelry and check out that thread because it is just so incredibly inspiring and the work that the participants are creating are just, I have no words, no words, um, but they are incredible and very deserving of a something handmade and special. And I hope you guys are going to like this, but um, I did sew some project bags as giveaway prizes. I did make two, one for the Ravelry winner and one for the Instagram winner. I hope you can make them out, but they are bird cages. Uh, they are, for some reason, they just remind me of Victorian bird cages. The fabric does have metallic gold to it. And then of course the contrasting fabric is appropriately mauve because I, I just couldn't help it, guys. I couldn't help it. These project bags are relatively large. You can easily house a sweater project in them and they do have a handle for convenience and two drawstrings right here. And I'm, I'm going to keep them nice and flat, but to give you an idea what they look like closed, here's an example. So uh, this is a, a project bag that I sewed up for Halloween and it's currently housing my current whip, which I'll get to in a little bit. That's one part of the giveaway prize. I am going to add some other goodies to it, so stay tuned for that. But just to give you a little heads up on what you can expect uh, to win if you are one of the lucky winners. And last but not least, <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Skillshare, which is an online learning community platform where you can learn pretty much anything. I use it all the time, uh, be it for business purposes, for creative purposes. Uh, case in point, I am the hand dyer behind Bull and Vine Yarns, my small hand dyed yarn company, and I dip into Skillshare and search for things that I need to learn in the moment, be it for social media marketing, finance, branding, you name it, it's 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 on there. And since we're all kind of stuck at home at the moment, I couldn't think of a better time to pick up a new craft or hobby. Uh, Skillshare has it all when it comes to that. So if you want to learn something like photography, calligraphy, illustration, painting, you name it, it's on Skillshare. <laughs> so if that sounds like something you'd be into, click on the link in the description box below and you'll get to try Skillshare for two weeks absolutely free on yours truly. You're welcome and thank you Skillshare. 
All right, what pray tell is in this project bag? <laughs> As you recall, last week I had mentioned that I was thinking about casting on Caitlin Hunter's reluctant homeschooler uh, Cardi. It was a big, giant, oversized, bulky weight cardigan that looked very, very cozy and snuggly and I did cast it on. I wound up the yarn into a cake, cast the thing on, and I was knitting on it and knitting on it, and then I'm just like, this is not enjoyable. Um, it's It's been a while since I've knit something with bulky weight yarn and large needles, and I will be totally honest, it was really taxing on my hands. It just, it wasn't a pleasurable knit for me, even though it's just pure stockinette back and forth, back and forth. So, I these days I am not a glutton for punishment. <laughs> So uh, I wasn't completely enamored with the project where I'm like, no, I must have it. I must have this in my in my wardrobe. I wasn't having those feelings. So I was okay just saying, you know what, this project is not for me. It's not what I want right now. And kind of letting it go to the wayside. But, but I did not let that stop me from casting on <clears throat> another Caitlin Hunter pattern that's been sitting in my library for quite some time saying, cast me on, you know you want to. Before I get into what I cast on exactly, uh, a couple of weeks ago I did a major de-stash of, of my personal yarn stash. I just had way too much stuff that I wasn't going to get around to knitting, uh, so I just piled it all in a bag, listed it uh, for sale, and um, I just want to say thank you, thank you so much to anyone who shopped that uh, de-stash sale. I hope you're enjoying the yarn because there were some really beautiful skeins in there that I was very reluctant to part with, but at the same time, I just, knowing myself, I would never get around to uh, knitting with it or, uh, you know, the colors just weren't to my liking anymore. And yeah, so they, they are off, they're hopefully in a happy new home and will be loved and used and Yay! The other good thing about the D-Stash was that it really helped to breathe new life into my stash. And so I was able to just look at those skeins and see what was calling to me and think about patterns that I've been wanting to cast on. And, and now that I'm on this monogamous knitting kick, I really do want to get in the habit of utilizing my stash, using what I already have, as opposed to going out and buying yarn willy-nilly, whatever catches my eye. Even though that's fun and I'm totally going to do that in the future, um, right now I, I'm kind of all just about, you know, using what I have. And I I'm excited about that. I had all this yarn spread out and I stumbled on uh, this yarn that I purchased from the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I think the, the last one that I went to a year ago um, before before Corona times. While I was at EYF, I stopped by the Little Gray Sheep booth. Uh, yeah, Little Gray Sheep. I picked up these mini skeins and I absolutely fell in love with the color combo and they've just been sitting in my stash. I have absolutely no idea what, <laughs> I had no idea what I wanted to make with them. I just love them together. And then from the same EYF, I also purchased a sweater quantities worth of Fichai Bouche. Uh, and it's really beautiful, soft lamb's wool uh, in this glorious charcoal black colorway. And I just saw these together and I'm just like, you know, they, they want to be something. So uh, the first pattern that came to mind was the Birkin Pullover by Caitlin Hunter. It's a pattern that I've been wanting to make forever and I've just never found the right yarn combination. And when I saw these skeins together, that immediately came into my mind and I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm casting it on. And that's what I did. And true to my monogamous knitting form, <laughs> I've been monogamously knitting away on this. And here is where I am. So yeah, the contrast on this part of the sweater is not that significant. And I was a little concerned, but at the same time, I'm just like, you know what? I don't care. I really don't care. I, I like the way it looks. I like how it's, you know, kind of bold up here with the, with the, the leaf motif over here and then the flowers are just kind of subtle but then the high contrast is going to pop back in when I get to a certain part of the motif in the middle so um, that gives you any indication of what it's going to look like eventually so yeah and I'm, I'm just having so much fun with it although I will say part of the chart is not a walk in the park because it does require you to knit with three colors at the same time which is something that I'm not used to. Color work in general takes a little extra brain power and motor skills because uh, generally when I knit with two colors I hold uh, a strand of yarn in each hand and throw in an extra color, a third color, and suddenly I'm <laughs> finding myself picking you know colors off of one finger and knitting the, with the main color in my right hand. Where's that other color? 
At the moment, this isn't the most relaxing knit because I do have to focus on the chart and the color work and knitting with three colors at the same time. But uh, that's, that's I wanna say maybe about 50% of the chart and the rest is just knitting two colors at the same time. So um, it's, it's not, impossible. It's not difficult. It's just, it requires a lot of brain power. Um, but I know once I get past the chart, it's going to be all smooth sailing because stuck in it, stuck in it, in the round, in the round for miles and miles and miles. The other small modification that I did, um, I didn't realize this until I actually read the pattern and looked at the photos more closely, but the pattern actually does incorporate baubles. And uh, Caitlin does give you very clear instructions for making baubles. Um, I also have a bobble making tutorial which I'll link up here in the doobly do if you're curious. Um, but I, I don't know, I just wasn't in the mood for bobble making. I don't know, for some reason I just didn't want bobbles on the sweater, but I did want something. I did want a little pizzazz. Um, so instead of bobbles and um, omitting them entirely, I did incorporate, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but I did incorporate beads just to add a little subtle sparkle. So yay, beads. I, I love knitting with beads. I don't know if you can tell. I do have a tutorial for that as well. I'll link to that in the doobly-doo if you're curious, but um, I do love knitting with beads and any opportunity or chance that I get to knit with them, I knit with them. So um, I, I'm just very happy with the way this is turning out. It's not gonna be like in your face sparkle, just very, very subtle. So yeah, that is where I am with this project. And I'm, I didn't swatch. As, as usual, are you surprised? I'm not, um, but I am using uh, US4 3.5 millimeter needles. And I did start off, I did cast on using US size two needles. Um, I'm not sure what that is in millimeters off the top of my head, but uh, you know, again, Kristen's scientific method of not gauging or swatching, uh, that's, that's how I roll. So yeah. And I know there are some of you out there that are shouting, show us your floats, show us your floats. All right, all right, here we go. These are my floats. Um, so yeah, I think they're they're relatively even. And I'm trying to, you know, stretch out my stitches ever, every couple of uh, stitches or so just to keep things nice and flush. But you know, it looks, it looks a little puckery, but I'm pretty sure once I block it out, it's just gonna lie flat. Um, I'm not concerned about that. So yeah, I'm trying to think what else? Yeah, it's slow going, but it's going. And I think the fact that I've just been completely monogamous with my projects, um, my projects have just been pretty much flying off the needles. I don't know if you can tell, but I've been finishing a lot of projects lately and it feels, it feels great. So yeah, that is where I am with that. And now I've come to the part of the episode where I chat about what Margot, my lovely assistant, is wearing. She is wearing my Threat Muir pullover, a pattern by Isolde Teague. And I knit this, I wanna say like two years ago, and it's easily one of my favorite sweaters that I knit. I'm so proud of myself for knitting this. It's Oh, the, I mean, the pattern was just so well written and the construction was so enjoyable. Uh, the yarn that I used was Jameson Spindrift and what's the other one? Jameson Shetland. And they all have Jameson in the title, but they're jumper weight and you can use them interchangeably. Really lovely yarn, holds up very well. And the weather that we've been having here on the East Coast, it's been cold and this has been getting a lot of wear. It just keeps, it feels, you know, very lightweight and lofty, but wearing it, it's... It keeps me so warm. All right, my friends, that is all the creative content that I have to share with you. These are short episodes because because I've been so monogamous with my knitting. But you know, again, sewing has kind of, with the exception of project bags, sewing is still kind of on um, on the DL. I've I just haven't had the sewing mojo that I've had in the past. So again, not beating myself up about that. It'll come back when it comes back. And, and that's that. But um, I guess I will move along into the uh, blather segment, a segment where I chat about what's happening in my life, should you care to stick around. And I guess I will chat about the weather because the, you can't, I can't help it. We just had, the East Coast just got hit with this mega snowstorm. There are piles of snow outside my window right now and we're just waiting for those mountains to melt into glorious piles or puddles of, 
gungy slush. So it's it's gonna be a good time pretty soon. But I think we easily got about 14 to 16 inches of snow. And yeah, it was just, it was crazy, it was crazy. So that did make for some good street photography uh, because as you know, I've been getting into street photography and just going out on these photo walks as a way to improve my photography and as a way to just get myself out of the house from time to time because, you know, I can't go roller skating and, you know, Corona times and I need to get out for a walk. And this just gives me purpose when I go out for a walk because if I don't have a purpose, I really just don't see the point in going outside at all. So I, you know, if, if you're looking for a reason to get out of the house, photo walks, they're awesome. And then I'm trying to think what else, you know, my birthday, I, I feel like I pretty much covered everything in the intro. It was very low key as I generally like them to be. You know, I'm, I'm not a person who likes big parties or, you know, celebrating, going all out, uh, you know, crazy for my birthday. Although I do like getting out of Dodge and, you know, traveling and going somewhere special, but you know, again, Corona times. So, but we did go out to dinner. Uh, a lot of the restaurants here have outdoor eating uh, with heat lamps and everything. Everyone's spaced out wearing masks and you know we did have a really nice dinner at this one italian restaurant in our neighborhood so that was really nice and a nice change from eating at home having to cook i swear when this thing is all over i'm never gonna cook another dish again i can't i can't i just i hate cooking i hate doing dishes it's not happening <laughs> All right, my friends, I'm going to end things there. Thank you so much as always for hanging out with me. If you enjoyed this episode and haven't already, please feel free to like and subscribe down below. I put out a video for your viewing pleasure every week. And until the next video, happy knitting, happy sewing, happy making, whatever your craft is. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye.